Hello, Tom Cosm here. Today I'm going to show you a Mammoth Max for Life patch I've created called the Pro Toolkit. Now what it is, it's a, it's a collection of 19 different utilities and tools that do functions that Ableton doesn't offer natively. So these are all handy things that I've thought the program needs but it doesn't offer. So I've got and built them and I've put them all into one handy toolkit, multi-purpose toolkit. Um, it's a tabbed system, so there's five different tabs here. We can flick through them to go to the uh, different devices. But first, I'm just going to start with this little utility on the side, simply called Timer. And what it does is if I hit the reset button, it will just start counting for me, and it will, it'll count the session time. So I can record how long that I've spent on a session, and we can check in. So whenever we finish a session, we check in. You'll notice the overall will continue counting, and it'll reset the current time. So you get an idea of how long you've worked on a project for in this session and overall, which is quite fun. The second one, which isn't in the tabs, is the chat. So if I click on the chat, brings up this little box and we can go enter a name, anything you like. I'm gonna call myself cool guy. Hit connect and anyone else who has this open on their computer, anywhere in the world, you can, you'll be instant, instantly connected to them. So I can be like, hey, how's it going? And then be like, oh look, Tom Cosmo says, hey cool guy, what's up? Um, the other interesting thing here you can do is you can type trivia and then say a number like 10. And the robot will start a game of trivia for you. A special type of mixer that accepts two signals as audio inputs and produces their sum as different tones at its output but does not pass the frequencies found in the original signals themselves. So here's a ring. Modulator. Woohoo, I got it right. So um, there's no one in there at the moment because I've just released this, but you can go in there, you can talk to other people, you can talk to me, you can play some trivia. It's kind of stupid, but I think it's pretty cool that you can actually do it within Ableton Live. Um, okay, so let's go to the first tab here. So first thing we've got here is a device called a multi-parameter curve. Um, and what this does is it lets you draw five separate envelopes to control five separate parameters anywhere in Ableton Live all at once with one single knob. So this is the master knob here. So what I'm gonna do, um, quickly for you is I've got some pads here they're all operators they're all and they've all got bandpass filters on them as you see down here so I'm going to assign each of these five different kind of units in this device to those separate bandpass cutoffs so I'm going to do that by clicking on the map button on one go over here and we'll click on the frequency see how it turns gray that means it's now been taken over by this device go back over here switch to number two map two boom and we'll do number three. These are always the most entertaining parts of my tutorial videos where you wait for me to process long boring shit. And finally, we're going to choose number five. Now the fun part is we can go into each one of these five tabs that we just selected and we can draw our own envelope. So you click to add a point, click to add another point. Um, we'll go up for this one like so. This one will make it go up and then down. This one will make it go down to here and then here and then across. And a little spike there. And the fifth one, just to show you that we can, um, if you hold down the option key, you can draw curves. So you can get really complex kind of waveforms here if you want. You can also zoom in. So let's say I want to zoom into this point, make that kind of really fast, and then click on full to zoom out. You can also zoom in horizontally if you want to get a bit more depth. Now what that means if I, is if I move this master parameter knob, you'll see this is kind of a representation of the visual representation of what's happening on all, all three of those curve lines, five of those curve lines, you'll see it moves them all at once. And that consequently changes the band pass of all those five filters. So let's play that and see how it sounds. And you can assign this to anything in live pretty much. So any device, any parameter, any VST parameter. Really fun to play with. Good to have one knob to control five different things. All right, let's move over onto the next one. This one is called logarithmic dial. Um, I'm just gonna start a beat here. Go back to our machine, let's bring that parameter up. Leave it there. So what logarithmic dial does is it's kind of like this one, but it's a bit more simple to use and it gives you a nice, smooth, perfect um, logarithmic curve, basically. So you'll see how the, we have a curve slider here and we have an input and an output. Now the curve slider is in the middle and that means nothing is actually going to happen. So I can move the input up and the output is exactly the same. But what happens is uh, 
if I move the curve slider, you'll see that we get a curve going that way. And if I move it this way, it goes the other way. That means that when I move the input, the output is going to follow the curve rather than an exact copy of the input. So if I play a bass here, So I've got a macro knob assigned to various things within Serum. It's a great synth, by the way. It's going to be fun to play with, but I can go back over to my toolkit. I can map that logarithmic dial to that macro of the bass. And now we can move this up and down and get those curves. Move back this way a bit. So that is the logarithmic dial. The next one we have, this is called 8 button slider. This is a funny little one. This has 8 buttons and you map it to a certain parameter and what it does is it splits these 8 buttons up into 8 different values within a range that you can specify with the minimum and max value. So to give you an example, I've got an arpeggiator thing here. And you'll see I've got some macro knobs, we've got sync rate to make it faster, gate to make the notes, sh the, the notes shorter frequency to open up the filter, wet is a phaser, and then the resonance. So what I can do is go over to this 8 button slider and I'm going to map it to those 5 macros. So map the first one to the synced rate, map the second one to the gate of the arpeggiator, map the third one to the frequency, map the fourth one to the wet and map the fifth one. Where are we? Is that the fifth one? Yep. Map the fifth one. Uh, excuse me. To the resonance. So what that means now is I just have to give these a minimum and a maximum value. I'm just going to set them all max on one. So it's between zero and one. Now if I click individual points in here, it will change uh, what we're listening to. So that's, that's kind of fun. It's good if you don't actually have a controller yet. Maybe you're just starting out and you don't have a controller. You can uh, assign these buttons to things on your keyboard and you can kind of flick between parameters. So that's cool. Um, what have we got next? We've got this one here, which is called the clip color. Now this one's really simple. What it does is it goes through and it analyzes all your clips that you have in session view and it changes them to the same color of the um, track color. So let's say I change this track color to yellow, change this one to whatever that color is, and this one to orange. Go back over to master, hit the button. Sometimes you have to have it twice. And there we go, that's done. So that, 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 that'll go through your entire set and rename, recolor all the clips. Just a little utility, but it's kind of handy. Right, what have we got over here? So we've got this one called, uh, I believe this one's called metronote. So metronote, it lets you specify a particular point in the arrangement view where you want the metronome to automatically turn off. So let's say I'm going to go in my arrangement view, I'm going to turn on my metronome. But I want it to turn off at bar number 3. So let's go back to metronome. Um, I'm going to, it says metronome stops at, so I'm going to say bar number 3, like that. Or we can move the slider. So bar number 3, and we turn it on, and we go back to the start. What's going on here? And the metronome turned off for us. So that's cool. Metronome, again, real simple. Good for, for if you're live jamming or you need a count in or a clicking track if you're a drummer. Now let's move on to page number two. Page number two, we have, the first one we have is called a locator trigger. Now you'll notice in arrangement view, I've got all these locator points that I've added in. Um, intro, drums in, drops, build ups, effects, and all that kind of stuff. Um, what we do is if we click rescan on this locator trigger, it, it finds what all those are and it, sh it displays them for you here, up to 16. And then what we can do is we can click on the go button and it will instantly jump to any one of those. So let's just jump to here, let's click on outro, let's jump over here, and so on. And we can go, oops, we've got to go previous here. See, if we go on previous, it'll jump through those. All the way back to back to the start. 
So that's handy. It's good for um, production environments. Uh, say you're playing the music to some kind of art or dance or something and you're not quite sure when you need to skip to the next track. This is really good to jump to various points in your arrangement view. Okay, the next one we've got, this is called Up at the Downs. This is a really strange one. It was a request and um, it's, um, it can do some pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm just going to play a lead for you here. Or something that re resembles a lead. What up at, up at the Downs does is you map it to two parameters and when you move the knob up, the first parameter will go up. But when you move it down, the second parameter will move down. So you can kind of move it around like this. And it has some interesting results. So I'm going to map the first parameter one to the frequency of this filter here. And I'm going to map parameter two to the rate of an auto pan, which is, has zero phasing, so it's just going to really gate the audio basically. Now if we go back here, and bring this up, it opens up the filter, but when I start bringing it down, we get that gating effect. I'll try mapping, I'll try mapping that to something else, see if we can get a, a better effect. Um, Maybe just the decay time of the filter. Let's see what, what that sounds like. Very experimental, but it can be fun. Anyway, that's up at the downs. Okay, the next one we have, this is a handy one. This is called Master Save. And what this does is it lets you set a destination on your computer and it will start recording the master output as a WAV file directly to your hard drive. But what it does is you set a certain time for how long you want it to record for before it overwrites itself. So you don't have to worry about your hard drive getting filled up. So this is good if you're live jamming or you're doing lots of stuff and you do something really cool but you weren't recording and you just want to grab what you did and bring it back into your project. So to give you an idea, we use this to set the capture time. You can have up to an hour. Uh, I'm just going to set it to seconds. So, uh, six is not very good. Let's go 10 seconds. Set the destination. Um, I'm going to go toolkit example, which is a folder I've created. We'll go open, ask for a file name. Uh, we'll call it must. We'll just call it example recording. And then we just have to hit start. And that's now recording. You can see it ticking along there. Um, and once it gets to 10 seconds, it's just going to overwrite that file again. So we're at 10 seconds now, and we're back again. And just to show you that it works, I'm going to hit stop here. And I'm going to go into my computer, go to toolkit example, and here it is here, master uh, example recording. So I've got a new audio track here called Rescued Audio. I just drag that in, like so. I'm going to do it properly. There we go. And that's recorded it for us. So just to prove that it is actually a recording and it sounds exactly right, let's play it. Awesome. So that's really handy. I'm, I'm quite happy with that one. Um, master save. Okay, the next one we've got, let's just play the beat again. The next one is called Timed Tempo Jumps. Now this lets you enter tempos manually. So 120, or BPMs I guess, and 170, that'll do. And then you specify a time, and by hitting the go button, the whole project will jump to that certain BPM, but it will take as long as you specify here in milliseconds. So let's say 1039 milliseconds, which is pretty much a second, and let's jump it to 70. And it's jumped. And you'll notice up here in the BPM it changes as well. Let's go back up to 120. up to 170 and you can do really long ones here I'm not gonna click that because it'll take a long time but yeah that's 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 a lot of fun that's a handy one to have okay the next one is called save reminder now this is really good if you're like me and you suck at saving all the time and you need some kind of help um, so what this does is it is it it plays a sample that you specify every certain period of time so I'm just gonna go load here and I'm going to load the sample that I've got right here. You see it's loaded it for us. If I click on preview, we can listen to it. Here I come to save the day. <laughs> Very good. And we can adjust how often we want to be reminded um, for that thing. So let's just put it on 
small value, 15 seconds, and I'm going to turn that on. And you'll see this counter, it slowly starts counting, slowly starts counting. And when it gets up to that 15 second mark, it's just going to play it. It's going to play it out the master. You might want to pick something a bit less intrusive than the sample I've picked, but it's just a good way to remind you to save all the time. Here I come to save the day. Just like that. And you'll see how it's uh, now reset itself. And it will continue to do that, so I'm going to turn it off for now. Okay, the, the last one in this tab is called BPM control. Now this lets you change the BPM up or down by a certain increment that you specify. So say I'm going to go 5. And then if we click the up button, you'll notice the BPM up here is now increasing by 5 uh, increments of 5. And we can go down by 5 as well. So that's, that's kind of handy. We can also double the time. Or we can half the time back down. So very real simple little utility that one, but it's, it's, I find it's quite handy. Okay, let's play that bass again. We'll play the sky, see what this one is. Okay, so the next one we have, or the first one on tab three, this is the multi-stage dial. Now this is an interesting what it, one. What it, what it does is it lets you move a master knob, and depending on where you have various split points, it will send a value to one of five different parameters, which can be assigned to anything in Ableton Live. So, for an example, if I move this master knob, I'm just going to turn snapping on because it snaps to the snaps the parameters. You'll see as I move it up, it'll move that first parameter until it reaches that blue snap point, then move it up to it'll move parameter 2 and then parameter 3 and then 4 and then 5 and so on and so on and so on and you can move these um, slice points around anywhere you like you can choose split evenly you can go half low or half high I'm gonna choose split evenly right now and um, with, with the skonk I've got it sent over to a delay over here and you'll see we've got various things we've got a delay we've got an auto filter with a band pass we've got a reverb an auto pan and a redux so I'm gonna assign all five of these parameters to various things within those effects on this return track so I'm going to do that by clicking map on parameter 1, go over here and we'll map it to the um, cutoff. So now that's um, taken over by this parameter knob and I can move this up and down by moving the master knob just for 20%. So that's all good, but the maximum is a bit too high and the minimum is a bit too low. Let's try that. Minimum is still a bit too low, we're not getting much through. Bring the max down just a little bit. Cool, so that's the first stage of the knob. Now the second parameter, I'm going to map it to, say, the decay time of a reverb. So now if I move it down, if I move it up beyond that blue snap point, start giving it lots of reverb. Nice. Now parameter three, let's map it to the amount of the auto pan. So it's going to bring the auto pan up if I move the knob even more. Whoops, I accidentally mapped it to itself. I accidentally mapped that to the master knob. We don't want that. We want that to be there. So again, bring up the reverb. And then the auto pan. Now I can map this fourth one to the rate of the auto pan. So the auto pan gets turned up on parameter 3 and then the rate slows down on parameter 4. Let's change the maximum value of that down a bit so it's going a bit faster when it reaches the end. And then of course perimeter 5, we're going to map that to the redux just to really rip the shit out of it. And we'll bring the max down on the redux as well. Awesome, so now we have one knob that controls five parameters in five different stages. Really good for live performance, just to have one knob to do heaps of stuff. Awesome, so that's the multi-stage knob. Number three, this is called Auto Solo. This is a interesting little one what it does is it lets you automate the solo of a track which you can not actually do natively in live I assume they do it because soloing something mutes everything else and it's a little bit of a thing that you don't really need but sometimes you do so you just click list here you pick the track that you want to um, 
mess with. Let's say, let's go for the beat that we've got there. So I'm just going to choose the beat, like so. We can turn the solo on and off for the beat. You see how it affects this here. <clears throat> and the cool thing about this is now we have an automation line for the solo. So I can have it turning off right at the end. Or turning on, sorry. Very good. So that's the um, auto solo. This other one we've got over here, master chain select. This is handy if you have different mastering configurations in your master channel. So if I go over to my master here, um, I'm just going to add a audio effect rack after the uh, Pro Toolkit here. And let's just pretend that we have two tracks and each track has a different set of mastering. So I've saved these mastering setti settings in my actual project, but now I'm playing live, I want to take these mastering settings back, but only have them play for a particular track. So let's just throw an EQ8 in here and throw a compressor before it. Like that. Let's just pretend that's you know, we'll put that put that down like that. There we go. That's a one mastering setting. We'll call that master one. And I'm just gonna duplicate this for example's sake and change that to master two. Maybe bring this up for master two and this down here or something. We need to go into our chain selector and make sure that each chain only has one increment. So that means we can move the chain selector to switch quickly between those two. And then what we can do is with this master chain select we first thing we have to do is we have to set the chain selector of the master output audio effect track as the thing we're going to affect so we go okay list the master track what device do you want i want the audio effect track and what parameter we want the chain selector so that's all good so now i can use these to switch between those two mastering um, presets that i had this if we scroll over here you'll see as i move these you'll see how it moves the chain selector here. That's all good, but what we can also do is we can set a monitor track. And what this does is it analyzes a MIDI track or any, any track that you, you want in session view. And if, it, if a clip gets triggered on that track, which is a number, say one or two, if you name it one or two, if you trigger that clip, it'll actually jump to the correct chains, um, the correct chain in your mastering rack. So I'm gonna list my tracks here and I've got a track called Dummy. And if we scroll over to Dummy, you'll see I've got two MIDI tracks, nothing in them, called one and two. If I hit one, it's going to go to that first mastering configuration. Now, if I hit two, you'll see how it jumped here. I'm going to go back to one. See how the master chain select jumps for us. So this is really good if you have a live set which has multiple tracks in it, but each one has its own different configuration for the actual mastering process. So you can have a Dummy track here and you can create these fake clips at the start of each song so you can be sure when you trigger the actual scene for the song the mastering is going to change the appropriate um, settings good fun really handy um what else we got here so that's the end of page four page five now this is a this is a nice experimental one this is called multi waveform display um let me just stop some of these things here mm -hmm. okay multi waveform display shows you two waveforms playing on two different tracks together so side by side so Ableton doesn't have any easy way of being able to see two tracks you're playing at the same time the waveforms or two samples you're playing so I've made this um, and what it does is you select which is track one so I'm going to choose loop one you might be this is for DJs obviously so you might call them track one or deck one Dirk, not tick and go loop two and then what we have to do is we just play a couple of samples. Go back to our um, machine here and hit reset. And there's the waveforms So of these two samples we're playing. The other thing we need to do is make sure we have the BPM of the samples in here. And it's, it's a bit tricky to get, to get the BPMs, but what I've done is if the original file name has the BPM in it, um, it will analyze that file name and it will update this for you. So say I have a track called Tom Cosm forward slash uh, Rubber Chicken and Can Openers 128 BPM. It will analyze that file name and figure out that oh this is 128 BPM and it will update this for us. So that's really handy. It's also it also updates as you change samples. So if I change, so if I pick that one and hit reset, it's now just playing the new sample for us. So that's, that's quite handy. It's a bit experimental sometimes. If it doesn't behave, just hit reset again. 
that's all good. I'm just going to turn this mastering chain off because it's peaking on the master. Very good. So that's that's all tab four is. That's really handy to have. Number five, we have this machine called Dual Toggle. Now what Dual Toggle does is you map it to two parameters in Ableton Live and then give those parameters two separate values. And then by hitting the go button, you can switch between those two parameters. You can change two parameters to two different things and then back again. So I'll tell you why this is handy. Let me just turn on all these. So I'm going to, I'll turn this lead off because it's annoying me. I'm going to map the um, first mapping to the volume and the second mapping to the send B and then I'm going to turn make sure that we give it a maximum value of it say 80 because it's the volume we don't want it to go up to six decibels but we want this to go up to 100 so now when I hit go it'll turn the volume down and it will send that over to the send B it'll do it instantly for us really good for live situations if you want to quickly send something over to a return track and turn the volume down at the same time let's do it again to the beats just to show you so I'm going to select the volume for the first mapping and I'm going to select send B and again we want this to be 80 and we want this to be 100 like so Like that. And I mean you can map this to anything you like and you can do it up to 12 times. I've created 12 different modules here. So that's, that's dual toggle. The final one we've got here, I'm just going to turn off the beats and everything. Turn these off as well. This final one is called Quantize Automation. So I'm going to go into my arrangement view here. Where's our bass track? Here's our bass track. So here's our macro. That's all good, but sometimes you want to record the um, automation, but you want it to be quantized. You want it to be in chunks rather than nice smooth smooth curves. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our quantize automator here. I'm going to choose. I'm going to well. I'm going to map this to that macro of the base. So that's now mapped like so. And if I move the tweak me knob, nothing's going to happen. Um, but I need to pick a quantize amount. So let's say quarter notes. Turn the quantize on. And you'll see how that quantize only jumps at quarter notes. I'll move the knob freely, but it'll, it will only jump at quarter notes. If I make it eighth notes. Well, let's just record that to show you. Sixteenth. Excellent. Now if I zoom in here, you can see that it's recorded the automation in nice chunks for us. So that's it. That is the toolkit so far. I'm going to keep adding to this and adding to this and adding to this. It's been really fun to make. It's taken me two years to kind of get all these things together. They're all really handy things that I use a lot and I think other people would use a lot. Um, this is a gift for pro members. This is this is what you get when you sign up or if you're already a pro member, um, you can go and download this right now in the do download archive. This is, this is a really handy tool and it's for the people who have supported the Cosm project and become a pro member uh, on my website. I'll also take this opportunity to say pro memberships in one month um, periods are now back. Um, I had to take them away for a while because of some technical problems, but they're now back. So that's $9.95 a month. You can cancel after one month. You can just have one month. You can get this. You can get all the resources, tutorials, uh, projects, templates that I've put online. Everything that I've ever made is all there. And there's a really good community of um, other users. That, you know, There's forums and people share and they talk and collaborate and offer advice and uh, give answers to people looking for advice. So if you're interested, go to cosm.co.nz. Get yourself a pro membership. This can be yours. And it is still in beta stage. I can't... It's kind of hard to break, but sometimes it does break. So if you do find a problem, please do let me know, and I'll fix it and update it. So cheers for watching. My name's Tom Cosm, and you are awesome.